Hello everybody and you're very welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about Tranter tractors. Um, now I don't know how many of you are familiar with Tranter tractors from the 70s and somewhat into the 80s and then they had a little bit of a revival um, later on in the 2000s. Um, there's not too many of them around anymore. I think there was something around 500 of them built and I was contacted by the Tranter owners group on Facebook, I think it was, yeah, Tr Tranto Tractors owners group on Facebook to ask me would I be interested in a little video together. So this is an introduction to the Tranter, the story where the Tranto Tractor came from, the story of the tractor. And I do hope to do, I didn't, sorry, I am doing a part two on site with um, a couple of Tranto Tractor owners, getting a little bit closer looking at the machine because I have never, um, I've never driven one. I don't, I'm not sure whether I've ever seen one in person. I may have done, but maybe didn't pay much attention i wasn't overly familiar with them but this is the story of how they came about so the tranto tractor you know as everyone knows it was built as a high speed transport tractor it was built in lancashire in england uh, it was the brainchild of stuart taylor who was a research student at manchester university and graham edwards who, who was actually his professor and they're the originators of the design so the Tranto tractors, you know, they were subsequently built from 1978 until 1987. So that's in Lancaster, the Series 1, and then in Cheshire, it was the Series 2. So the idea was to create a new concept of tractor for on-farm transport duties with low draft focus specification, which was, you know, it was more efficient and was faster on the road, uh, reduced fuel consumption, um, you know, compared to, you know, your conventional tractors. I wonder also... You know could be useful to most if not all you know to a certain extent pto tasks not so much your heavy draft work your your plowing and the likes of that um or in muddy you know muddy fields and stuff it was basically a transport tractor um that could do a little bit of off-road work as well so half half truck half tractor and you know when you when you see where its route came from and later as we get into the you know the jcb fast track end of things and of course um the MB track, which was more of a utility tractor at the time, bigger four wheel drive utility tractor, uh, obviously had high speed capabilities to a certain degree as well. Um, but this tractor, you know, it was loosely based somewhere in between the two of them. So we're looking at the timeline then. So in 1972, the initial concept was revealed in, uni in a you know, the university thesis by Stuart Taylor. In 1973, there was a prototype built in Manchester in the UK. In 1976, it was launched at the Royal Show in Stoneley in Warwickshire in the UK. Moving on to 1978, then the first models were sold into Scotland. You know, uh, in 1979, then there was a license and agreement signed with a company called EVA Industries. 1980, EVA launched the Series 1 at Blenheim Palace. In 1982, the EVA production ceased, so two years later. 1983, the Series 2 was introduced at 72 horsepower and 96 horsepower and 180 uh, sorry 128 horsepower um two-wheel drive 1986 four-wheel drive series two tranters were built in sandbeck so that was in the ex foden truck factory 1987 uk production ceased when many of the uk's automotive component suppliers went out of business you know in and around that midlands area so then in 1999 work was conducted with uh, garage gears of diwasa that's in india and this enabled the company to create its Indian supply chain and one what began with Tata components originally designed by Mercedes-Benz and three prototypes were built. Now, when we look at the design of the Tata um, and what gave it its, you know, high speed capabilities up to, it was around 80 kilometers an hour. There was a comfortable speed. Uh, the front axle was out of a Land Rover. So I had coil spring in the front, Land Rover front axle and it had a multi-leaf spring on the back and the brakes were air over hydraulic. In 2004, HMT agreement was to build, you know, 10 pre-production 65 horsepower examples with assistance from the UK design team. So looking at Stuart Taylor's transport study, so the design was conceived by Stuart Taylor and Graham Edwards, who formed a firm to develop the idea in 1973. The name was derived from the original title, which was Transport Tractor, so Tran Tor, Transport Tractor. So obviously that became the Trantor. A prototype was built in 1973, which was bought by Tiny Rowland's company, Lanro, and went on to Nigeria. Lanro then purchased the next 20 revised prototypes 
and sold them as Tranter's African licensee to South Africa, Zambia, Nigeria and Malaysia for evaluation and use by farmers, cooperatives and public authorities. So they were basically putting it out into the field, you know, and doing tests on it and, you know, seeing how um, suitable it was for varying applications. McConnell of Ludlow, so that's McConnell Hedgecutters in Shropshire, helped build a few tranters for Stuart Taylor before EVA Industries PLC purchased the UK rights for the Series 1 tranter trackers and set up assembly in Manchester. The tranter Series 2 was introduced to address some of the issues of customers' use and manufacturing systems that were found with the earlier, you know, the earlier Series 1 machines. Options of alternative engines, so that was actually a Leyland engine, the original engine was a Perkins engine. So uh, you know, options for this alternative engine, 72 horsepower to 128 horsepower, were produced at Sandback. The Tranters were two and four wheel drive and fitted with air over hydraulic braking system, which allowed the operation of high speed trailers on the highway in, you know, legally in the UK at a speed of in and around 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles per hour in the UK. By 2004, HMT had constructed and sold about 400,000 tractors designed by Zetter and entered them into agreement that enabled them to make only 10 65 horsepower Tranter specifications with the assistance of the UK-based Tranter design and manufacturing team. And of course, as is in a lot of cases with these startup companies, serious working capital shortages had caused HMT to reduce their volumes of tractors from their break-even level of 12,000 per annum to a level near 4,000 per annum. The prime reason why the Tranter team was interested in India was because the British supply chain had to be closed as one automotive supplier after another closed down in 1985 to the 1995 period. The work in India where Gajra gears had, uh, you know, that had been very useful to learn about the quality and cost of Indian automotive components. This family firm was as important to the Toronto project as that of Tiny Rowland Lonro built in, you know, in a different way. When the Toronto design and manufacturing team went to work and building the 10 Tranters at HMT, they had 10 years of experience behind them in, the, in, you know, the, in that Indian automotive sector. India's variable quality, low cost, and the fact that there is a strong determination to be a manufacturing nation is the reason that Tranter tractors invested so heavily you know, in that Indian auto component based supply chain to replace the UK supply chain that had disappeared so quickly in that period in the late 80s and into the 90s as the UK automotive industry suffered several high-profile collapses. Because Tranter's key decision-makers were determined to create a farm tractor for worldwide farm efficiency, there were three critical factors. The Series 3 Javelin model of the Tranter tractors was developed in order to enter the higher horsepower farm tractor market, and it was designed to be an additional higher horsepower Tranter tractor for those farmers wishing to move away from the older that ploughing based system of heavy tillage into zero tillage systems and in particular to have a product for larger acreage farms in Australia, you know, the FSU, USA, Canada and of course in Brazil. A wider and more global market was in mind. The prototype will be particularly focused towards those, you know, work tasks that in zero tillage are very much less, you know, in variety than is required for farmers using a ploughing based tillage system. So there wouldn't be as heavy draft, you know, there wouldn't be as much need for that heavier, more powerful, high traction four wheel drive tractors. You know, that's where Tranter was aiming itself going forward. So we move on then to 2000. So, you know, there was a new design. So this is an article from Farmers Weekly uh, in and around 2000. So the Trantor, you know, which was the original high speed tractor developed in the 1970s, that has been completely redesigned with more emphasis on field work performance and with a 45 miles per hour top speed rather than its predecessor, which was, you know, over 50 miles per hour. The new model inherits an improved version of the original Trantor four wheel drive, uh, sorry, four wheel braking system, front and rear suspension to meet fast tractor speed limitation, you know, exemptions on the road. It is also based on the same lightweight design approach, but the big improvements are in the PTO and the three-point linkage to increase efficiency in the field. The gearbox is developed from the original Tranter transmission with five four speeds, which are doubled to you know ten to a high-low ratio box with a transfer box that has been added to move you know the main drive shaft sideways to allow space for more efficient direct drive from the bell housing up to the PTO. 
the transmission on the newer model it was designed for you know a maximum of 135 horsepower the engine options from 90 horsepower to 125 horsepower were planned for the production model so they were leaving that little bit there for anyone that wanted to play with the engine rear linkage you know had two lift rams instead of the single ram employed on the previous models boosting the lifting capacity from 2000 kilos to two and a half thousand kilos the load space behind the cab carries 500 kilos other improvements include a sharper steering angle to reduce turning circle to 9.7 meter diameter and suspension with leaf springs at the rear coil springs at the front and telescopic shock, shock absorbers front and rear is modified to improve ride quality power for the prototype tranter is provided by you know that indian built naturally aspirated tata engine developing 90 horsepower from four cylinders this is a rugged low cost unit with relatively simple servicing requirements and would be suitable for india and other far eastern markets but the engine bay on this newer tranter you know it will also take power units from perkins and aveco and other leading manufacturers to suit europe and north american markets now as i'm reading this this was written in 2000 so if it sounds like this is current today it's not this is from 25 years ago farmers weekly in 2000 hst developments the lancashire company behind the tranter revival is owned by graham edwards a partner in the original tranter project hst's engineering director steve castellani carried out the design work for the new model but the prototypes were assembled in india which is currently the world's fastest growing market will also supply some of the components for that production version the aim said mr edwards you know it was to set up an assembly plant to supply major regional markets these would operate in collaboration with existing tractors or farm equipment companies and he expects one of the assembly operations you know that he did expect it obviously uh, to be in the uk to supply the european market earlier tractors were designed mainly for transport the new version is still that high speed vehicle you know which will easily outperform a conventional tractor on the road but the most important developments you know that are the improvement to the pto obviously and of course as we said to the hydraulics to give better performance in the field so compared with a conventional tractor that newer tranter is much lighter than a 3.7 ton which is an advantage for everything except heavy draft work which this tractor was not aimed at and would also be less expensive to manufacture the target list price for the 90 horsepower version it was something at around twenty five thousand pound at the time complete with four-wheel drive which is roughly half of the price of what the existing fast tractor on the road was then and we all know of course that was the jcb so it is pretty obvious that when that was launched you know it was behind the introduction of the jcb um which was you know earlier in the very early 90s and if you haven't seen the jcb fast track video i'll leave a link here um but uh yeah i'm sure the nail in the coffin for the tranter was the jcb and its development and you know that the might that was behind was behind the jcb company the money and the infrastructure and the resources the engineering and um, the fact that they built their own engines which would have literally put you know tranter to bed pretty quickly um, although it was a, a cheaper alternative it probably would have suited the uh the you know the indian market and the you know the far east market more so than what the fast track would it was a smaller machine lighter machine um so i do hope to have a part two to this video i will have a part two to this video and i will be up close and personal with a tranter and hopefully i get to have a driving one um yeah there's a few of them out there looking at a few that have been up around for sale i've been doing a little bit of searching and you know not overly expensive for the rare tractor that they are something around 10 grand or a decent running one uh, which is a, a ripe bit of uh, english or uk history um there are a few of them out there and i will get to see them i don't know how many are in ireland but you know i'm sure there's a few and if you do of course as always if you do have any history with this model with the tranter if you've driven them or if you've worked for them if you've any history with them please drop a comment in the comment section so that's it for this week enjoy your weekend enjoy the bank holiday and i will see everybody next week